Hey there, BookTube. How's it going? Noah. Everyone who reads the Must Converse is the channel. Thanks for coming by again. Today I'm going to explore some more Borges. Oh my god. What a mind blow. Amazing author. Amazing author. Now, Borges did only short fiction. Uh, you, you, you'll you recall if you saw the uh, first collected works that's in this uh, edition here, Collected Fictions, Penguin Classics Deluxe Edition, the first uh, collection is called The Universal History of Iniquity, or The Universal History of Infamy. I've seen it translated as well. In that, Borges gives us uh, short biological snippets of very uh, undesirable characters, un unlikable characters. But in fictions, the next collection is very, very different. And it will not serve to talk about fictions as a whole, uh, that, that collection there. Uh, these, these short works, the one we're going to talk about today, is called Pierre Menard, author of the Quixote. And we're talking about Cervantes' Don Quixote, for sure. Um, but these works are very mind-blowing, completely mind-blowing. So, this work is eight pages long, eight pages long. Um, and let's get to it. So, Pierre Menard is a fictional author that Borges has created for this story. And Pierre Menard is doing, uh, is writing the Quixote. And there's like two, maybe three pages of this kind of exploration of what he's doing and how he goes about it and... Um, you know, he, he's, he's writing it not in his native tongue. He's writing it in Spanish, which is the language that the Quixote is written in eventually, in, uh, originally, right? So he's writing this, uh, the Quixote in the language that the Quixote is written in, which is not his native tongue. And so, you know, you get to two or three, maybe four pages into this thing. You're halfway through this story. And, and I'm thinking, what did he do? You know, he wrote the Quixote or what he rewrote the Quixote. Did he add something? Did he embellish it in some way? What is Borges talking about? What is it that this guy, Pierre Menard, did to the Quixote in order to have this story about it? What is going on here? <laughs> and and uh, we get to a point... <clears throat> Where, um, and I'm just going to give it to you, that uh, <laughs> it says, The Cervantes text and the Menard text are verbally identical, but the second is almost infinitely richer. More ambiguous, his detractors will say, but ambiguity is richness. It is a revelation to compare the Don Quixote of Pierre Menard with that of Miguel de Cervantes. Cervantes, for example, he wrote the following, Part 1, Chapter 9. Truth, this is a quote from the Quixote, Truth, whose mother is history, rival of time, depository of deeds, witness of the past, exemplar and advisor to the present, and and the future's counselor. This is uh, Borges now. This catalog of, of attributes written in the 17th century and written by the ingenious layman Miguel de Cervantes is mere rhetorical praise of history. Menard, on the other hand, writes, Truth, whose mother is history, rival of time, depository of deeds, witness of the past, exemplar and advisor to the present, and the future's counselor, unquote. History, this is Borges again, history, the mother of truth. The idea is staggering. Menard, a contemporary of William James, defi defines history not as delving into reality, but the very fount of reality. Historical truth for Menard is not what happened, but it is what we believe happened. The final phrase is, 
exemplar and advisor to the present and the future's counselor are brazenly pragmatic. All right. So <laughs> what he does there is he quotes the exact same text in Cervantes' voice and talks about how it is mere rhetorical listing of attributes and then says that same exact text, that same exact passage again, and is praising it for its imaginative richness and its subtlety and how staggering the ideas are that's coming out in this thing. And we have the same text and we have different meanings coming out. That is when it becomes apparent that what this guy Pierre Menard has done is basically just copy the Quixote um, in his own time, 20th century. Um, but what we have from Borges is an exploration of context. Just as important as the text itself is the time that the text was written in. Uh, this, the, the, uh, Don Quixote was written originally uh, around 1600 AD. And we're talking about uh, this being composed somewhere around mid-1900s AD. So a difference of about 300 years between the writings of it. Even though we're talking about the exact same words. Now, uh, there's so much difference in history between history of uh, that word being used by Cervantes in, uh, in you know, Spain in uh, the 1600s or, or late 1500s and Pierre Menard basically using the term history in uh, late 1900s, right? There's so much more context uh, to be to be taken into account when somebody is talking about history or uh, what what history means to the culture. Um, ultimately, it is it is very uh, telling what he what Borges says right there that history is not what happened, but what the collective believes happened. It is a a, a narrative that the collective of uh, society, collective culture, has um, taken as their truth and what they uh, believe and then moving forward from. It, it, is, it is a beautiful thing. This is actually a buddy read with uh, To the Lit House, Yasmin. Uh, this, is, this has been an amazing read because Yasmin is from Argentina and giving so much great cultural um, background, uh, historical context for some of the things that Borges is writing. And she had said, <coughs> it's so interesting to uh, think about what Borges is doing here with uh, the context in which texts are written and not being able to uh, kind of separate them from history what we what we perceive their history to be, but we also take text, um, what we can take from them, just basically with our own sense of what history is. And she said that it's very interesting to think of, and I think so too, um, a problematic author like Shakespeare, for example. There is no doubt that Shakespeare, what the works attributed to Shakespeare are, a masterful and wonderful use of language and these kind of things. But think about it. What if a, a, the, a, one of the, a, you know, a problematic play <laughs> by today's standards was written down by somebody right now and released? Would that be accepted as literature? Would that be accepted and even put out for publication. Um, very, very interesting stuff. And it, it's, uh, it's fun to explore how we, um, 
how we forgive uh, a text like the Quixote, for example, based on uh, its time and place in history, those kind of things. But if those same words were written down in a different time and place, um, <laughs> we'd have a much different reaction. Um, these immortal stories, uh, like King Arthur uh, and, the, and the Arthurian legends, Don Quixote is a wonderful example, um, the Arabian Nights, these uh, stories can be infinitely explored. And throughout all times uh, and cultures can be explored. And that kind of thing is what Borges is working out here. And I want to bring up uh, one more uh, short paragraph that is um, maybe a page from the end of this uh, story. Borges writes, There is no intellectual exercise that is not ultimately pointless. A philosophical doctrine is at first, a plausible description of the universe. The years go by, and it is a mere chapter, if not a paragraph or proper noun in the history of philosophy. In literature, that falling by the wayside, that loss of relevance, is even better known. The Quixote, Bernard remarked, was first and foremost a pleasant book, and it is now occasion for patriotic toasts, grammatical arrogance, and obscene deluxe editions. Fame is a form, perhaps the worst form, of incomprehension. So, Don Quixote, right? <laughs> what, an, what an awesome exploration of literature and the writing of literature and how words are um, understood by different people at different times. Borges is a master. Like I said, this short story is eight pages long and something that uh, can be uh, explored over and over and over. Uh, please let me know your thoughts, BookTube. I'd love to get into some discussion of Borges. If you've read it, um, if you haven't read it, read it and let me know what you think. Talk to you next time, BookTube. Thank you. Bye-bye.